Thanks everyone for joining us uh, in our online. God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory.
help us to align our hearts to you tonight, Jesus. Amen.
some voices in this room. Let's just take a minute, uh, an attitude of prayer. Let's just pray about the thing that is on our heart. God, we lift up these prayers to you this evening, tonight. Um, and we pray um, that you'll be with us, um, that we'll know that you've been with us and um, that all things work good for those who love you. Amen. Please take a seat. Thanks. Thanks, guys. That was beautiful. Thanks, Josh. Uh, if you haven't met Josh before, this is Josh. Um, I'm Andy. If we haven't met, I'm on the ministry team. Uh, I've got a number of announcements, so just get ready. First one, bedtime reading. Lots of good bedtime reading this week. Uh, the 2022 to 2023 annual report is out. Uh, what a beautiful book this will be for your bedside table. Uh, they're out in the foyer. Um, when the annual report comes out, it also means it's time for the AGM. And uh, last year, the AGM was a very exciting event. And this year, we thought we'd have two of them. Uh, so both on the same night, Thursday the 2nd of November, starting from 7.30. Uh, next week, we have an exciting guest, uh, the... Reverend Professor Glenn O'Brien, he's com coming to talk about artificial intelligence. And I was uh, reflecting on this, uh, this time last year, I don't think I ever used AI in, um, knowledgeably. Like, I don't think I, I went out and opened up the AI thing to do some work. Uh, now, I use it every day at work um, across, like, three different AI-type platforms. So... Obviously, it's coming, which is exciting. Um, and tonight, we have a very special guest. We've got Tegan Phillip. Do you want to come and join me, Tegan? Um, Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Claps. Um, do you want to tell us about yourself in like two seconds? Because you're going to spend the next 20 minutes telling us about yourself. But, you know, just a little... I'm Tegan Phillip. I used to play netball professionally, and I have two kids and a husband and a dog named Mac. Ooh. Well, I was going to ask. Uh, <laughs> cats or dogs? Dogs. Good. Good choice. Um, I can't remember what the second question <laughs> was meant <laughs> to be. Uh, third question, uh, uh, netball or tennis? Like, why? Oh, yes. Uh, netball because I did play tennis in the summer, netball in the winter, but um, netball because I enjoy the team sports more than I do those individual ones. It's nice to share those moments with others. Oh, what a beautiful answer. Oh, beautiful thank you. Response. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, I know what the second question was. Tell us about your family. <laughs> yeah, my family. Well, I have a husband and two boys. Mm-hmm. Um, Archie is two um, and Sonny is four months old. Oh. Yes. I don't think I've met Sonny. No, you haven't. No. No, I've only met <laughs> Just that. Um, awesome. Well, Tegan's going to share with us in just a moment. But before she does, just turn to the person next to you and say hi. It was a little bit intro um, of me and what I was lucky enough to do for uh, 10 or so years. But um, thank you for having me this evening. I'm here to um, share about um, my life and my faith. um, And I'll be touching on um, staying true to faith in all walks of life. Beautiful. Um, It is known that in our faith or in our life that our faith will be tested. Sometimes it will be a small test, other times um, quite significant. Sometimes we'll be aware of it, but other times we won't be and it won't be until we reflect back that we realise that it was. God challenges us and our faith to help us grow and become closer to him. So in uh, James 1, 2 to 4 says... Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. I grew up in Anglesey and I attended Anglesey um, Primary School, played netball at the Anglesey Football Netball Club and attended Anglesey Baptist Church as well. And um, no one in either of my, um, or my teammates or my peers at school attended uh, church, just myself. And then those at church were either younger than me or older than me. Once I began high school at Christian College in Year 7, that is where I met um, other Christians and became friends with them um, and through their churches and their friends got to meet others as well. Um, It was great to have friends that shared the same faith um, that I did. While attending Christian College, I played all sports. We have the basketball team, um, the netball team and the football team. And pretty much it was the netball team that played all other sports. And yes, we played basketball like we play. We're playing netball. No one was dribbling the ball. (laughs) We're just trying to launch it long to each other and pass it around. Sometimes successfully, other times not so much. But any opportunity I got, um, I love to play sport. So I put my hand up for it. Conveniently, it got me out of classes as well, but shh. Um, It was playing for my school in year 12 at a tournament in Melbourne um, where we went away for the whole week. Um, And I was just there playing with friends and it was because the sport, it was the sport that I loved. Um, A lady from Netball Victoria came and approached me and um, asked me to trial for the Victorian under oh, 19 and under and 21 and under state teams that year. So that was in 2006. And I didn't know that anyone else was there watching. I was just out 
um, having fun. And then I trialled in 2006, um, 2007, both unsuccessful years, and finally made my first state team in 2008 where I got to represent uh, Victoria at the 21 and under nationals. In my second year playing for Victoria in 2009, I was also selected into the Australian under 21 squad. And they were choosing a team to go to the World Youth Cup, which was in the Cook Islands. I wasn't successful for the team selection. However, two days before they were flying out, I got a call asking me to go um, because there was an injury. And my response on the phone, I think um, she was taken back by it a little bit, but I said, I'll have to check with work um, and get back to you. And she was like, oh, okay, well, quickly, please. Little did she know my dad was also my boss. However, I wanted to check with my supervisor, make sure it was all clear, um, got the all clear, called back, and she was very relieved on the phone that I was able to go. That was on the Tuesday. On the Wednesday night, I played in a grand final in Melbourne which I think we lost in the end, but then I flew out 6 a.m. Um, the following morning and over to the Cook Islands I went. So I was sharing court time uh, with the other goal attack and then about three quarters of the way through the tournament, she actually ruptured her ACL. And you can see in the picture on the right, she's in, um, got the big brace on her knee. So I went from not being in the team to sharing court time to starting seven and then playing in the gold medal match, which we won against New Zealand. Uh, reflecting on all of my unsuccessful selections, including at the Australian Diamonds level, level, so I made the team, which I'll touch on, in 2014, and even post then, I was in and out of the team. So once you're selected, it doesn't mean you're selected every year. It's all always on performance and what other players are doing. Um, but now I see those opportunities um, that I was given. God was providing me um, the, the ability to learn and um, how to refocus, but then also building my resilience as well. Throughout the years, I was in and out of representative teams when I was younger, playing country football netball, which is what I absolutely loved, uh, at Anglesey and then in Geelong. And I was um, definitely disappointed when the Melbourne Vixens eventually said to me, I couldn't play any longer, but fair enough. Um, and so, even during those times, I was actually hesitant to share my faith in my netball communities as I wasn't sure, um, you know, what they would think. Um, I didn't really want to be judged by that and I just wanted things to be nice and for me to fit in. So, in 2010, I was given my first contract to play for the Melbourne Vixens. I moved from Anglesey into Geelong, you know, that half an hour closer up the highway, made it a lot easier. And then after a few years, I decided to find a church in Geelong, so it was therefore closer to home. Um, during the season, you're away generally every second week, so attending church is quite difficult. However, um, when I could, I obviously attended. In my early years at the Vixens, uh, I was... If I was asked, um, I would say that I went to church, but it really wasn't something that I wanted to, um, I, I opt to talk about too much. However, as I got older and I got more comfortable in the elite environment, uh, I was open and even looked for opportunities to share about my faith. I knew that I had teammates that respected my beliefs um, and even asked genuine questions. Sometimes I was worried that I wouldn't have the right answer that they were looking for. So anytime they asked a question, I quickly shot up a prayer, uh, being grateful for this opportunity, but also asking for the right words to respond. And when I was playing elite netball, uh, you train five, six, sometimes seven days a week, sometimes multiple sessions in one day. When I first started in my first year, I remember at a couple of court sessions, I was like, I don't want to keep doing this. This is so hard. These people that play for eight years, 10 years plus, I don't know how they do it. Um, the court sessions were horrible. However, um, the more I trained, the more I got used to it, I got comfortable with being more uncomfortable and I actually really learned a lot about myself and how, I can, how hard I can actually push myself. Funnily enough, it was 10 years later when I decided to retire. I remember um, taking the court, court for the very first time uh, with the Melbourne Vixens and um, Sherelle McMahon was on the court playing goal attack. She called time. The coach looked down the bench and said to me, you're on. There was three minutes to go in the match and I was so nervous. 
All I remember is walking out and the TV lights, it was so bright. Uh, before the whistle went, the goal shooter at the time was Caitlin Thwaites. She came up to me and she said, first penalty shot is yours. And I was like, oh, no, definitely don't need that. But I went out, the centre pass happened, and I literally had to tell myself what to do. Drive for the centre pass, clear, now drive and get the ball, now run into the circle. Surely enough, within those three minutes, a penalty came in the circle, and I had to, um, Katie put the ball down, I picked it up, and the shot went in, and I was so relieved. Um, and I remember that I actually shot three from three, um, and that was my very first game that I played. In 2014, I won my first premiership with the Melbourne Vixens, and I still remember the game and all the emotions that went with it. It was a home game, um, so my family and all my friends were there. We were obviously lucky to have the home crowd as well. Um, and yeah, it was an awesome experience. Um, at the end of the game, we were all celebrating, and then um, the presentations began, and then I was giggling and laughing with the girls beside me, um, heard my name called and I was like, oh, what was that for? And um, have, it just so happened they also got MVP um, of the match, so I probably should have been paying a little bit more attention in that moment. However, the girls directed me um, to where I needed to go. And, um, yeah, that was just a little cherry on the cake um, for that particular game. In 2020, jumping along a little bit, was my final year. I decided halfway through the season that um, I was going to retire at the end of the year. It happened to be um, the year of COVID, so therefore uh, we had to move to Queensland for three months. Now, the process for that to happen was crazy. We were, um, the league was happening, it wasn't happening. We were going away for a couple of weeks, then we were playing back in Melbourne and then we were going to this state and then this state. Um, finally, we were told we were going for eight weeks. Our bags were packed. We were getting on a flight. We weren't getting on that flight. We were back training. We were getting on the next flight. No, we're not on that one. We're training. And it was back and forth, back and forth. Finally, we got on that plane and we flew up to Queensland uh, for what we thought was eight weeks. Little did we know we weren't coming back um, until the season was over. The younger girls in the team were super excited about this experience. Us older ones that were a little bit more settled at home weren't uh, quite as excited, however, wanted to play and was going to do what was necessary to get the league up and running. So um, away we went and lived in uh, what was called the hub up there. Um, and uh, yeah, what a, what a crazy whirlwind year that was. Um, but we were good enough to go all the way through and play um, in that grand final and being a team from Melbourne um, and what, you know, everyone in Victoria went through. Um, that was, uh, yeah, pretty special for us to be able to go and do that. And I remember um, walking out onto the court for the very last time. I felt like even though we were in Queensland, we were playing uh, Perth, that we had the crowd advantage, which was nice. Everyone got on board with the Vixens. And, uh, yeah, it was such a tight ma match that we won by one goal. Um, and I was, unfortunately... Like all the other girls, we couldn't have all of our family and friends there like we usually would. Um, but I was lucky to have my brother-in-law who flew over from the NT because he was able to come. Um, and then yeah, that was the first time he ever saw me play and then obviously the last time as well. But super cool to have him there and then a couple of friends in, from Melbourne that also um, attended that game. Now, rewinding a little bit. Um, one year... Um, at the Vixens, I had some of my teammates uh, that came down and stayed with me in Geelong and I um, oh, was able to get them to come to church on a Sunday morning. I was uh, super nervous about it, didn't know what they would think, would they like it, dislike it, um, but it was an opportunity so I was like, let's go for it and it's funny because it's still something the girls talk about today. Remember that time we went to church with you and this happened and this happened? So, um, yeah, it is something that is still on my mind but nothing in terms of bringing them to church and them becoming Christians, nothing like that happened. Um, however, I was uh, chatting to a good family friend um, after I said, hey, the girls came during the week, on the weekend. Um, she said to me... Uh, that's okay that nothing happened or hasn't happened um, because it's all about planting the seed. And so that then 
um, was my mentality in any conversation that I had uh, with teammates or anyone else, that I don't have to be the one to bring someone to Christ, but I can be the one that can plant the seed and someone else can make that grow. And so, um, as I said, those conversations that I had, um, I embraced them and was like, this is my opportunity to plant a seed. And hopefully, at some point, it will grow. Man, was I nervous about sharing my faith, especially in the sporting world and especially early on when I just started. But you'd be surprised how, how um, or who else out there is also a Christian. And as I came to realise that there were actually players in other teams that were also Christian. And I was also encouraged um, by other athletes in other sports who were openly sharing their faith. So, therefore, that is something that I wanted to do as well. I remember attending a Bible study and having missed the week before, probably for netball. Um, Everyone was asked to go away and think of a word um, that would help their relationship grow with God. So, while I was listening to everyone else's responses, um, the word acknowledged came to me. And so, I shared that. And then, um, from then on, that is what I actively wanted to go and do. So whether that was before a match, um, I would actually pray before every match. Um, Initially, I would put my hands, uh, my head in my hands, otherwise everyone would see with my eyes closed. Um, But then I had the courage to take that away and then everyone knew that that's what I did and I prayed before every match. Um, Whether that was during the game, I I remember sitting in a a, a timeout um, at a half time, just shooting up a little prayer, acknowledging him and um, being thankful for where I was in that moment. Uh, Whether it was after a match, I wanted to acknowledge him. Uh, Whether it was a training day, a work day, um, or a day just at home, I wanted to acknowledge him. Yes, we should do this all the time, but do we? And did I remember doing it every time? No. However, I was making an effort in that space to do it. While playing professional netball for 10 years, I committed to being a one-club player and only played for the Melbourne Vixens, which is quite rare. I also represented Australia multiple times, which included debuting at the 2014 Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. Um, I was lucky enough to have my now husband and uh, my parents over there with me in Glasgow. And I remember coming on in our first game against Wales at half-time And um, besides in the 21 and under team, this was the first time, um, you know, I was really representing Australia for the Australian Diamonds. And um, yeah, something that I was super grateful grateful for, a really um, cool experience to wear that dress and go out on the court with a group of girls and play the game that I love. And so being um, part of the Commonwealth Games means living in the Athletes' Village. Um, All the netballers lived in one house. Um, It was three stories, I think. Me and one of the other girls, we were were, um, in what we called the loft and the roof was angled like this. So half the room we could stand up in and half the room we couldn't. Yes, we hit our heads multiple times trying to scounge through our luggage. Um, But netball starts at the start of the two weeks of the Commonwealth Games and goes all the way to the end where there's other athletes that are there for one day. Um, And one day only, that's their opportunity where we get to play a full tournament. And um, we played in the grand final or the gold medal match and uh, lucky enough to win that match against New Zealand. So um, super blessed, thank you, to uh, be able to share that moment with my parents as well. My husband Joshi had gone to Italy to play his own sport by then. So unfortunately only saw the start of the tournament. And um, so, oh, I'll just find where I'm at. That's right. Um, So, the platform that I was given, I wanted um, God to use me um, for his good. I wanted people to know about Jesus and the Christian life that I was living, which I still am and very grateful for. So, I often prayed, use me, God, for your will. Let me see that I am different, but it's because of you. One of my biggest challenges that I faced uh, during my career was when I ruptured my ACL in 2016. This was that particular game. Um, it was a pre-season match in, um, in Shepparton 
and it was against the Adelaide Thunderbirds. I'd come on at half time and there was a less than one minute to go in the game. And all I did was catch the ball in the circle as I do every time. Uh, my knee went out and in and down I went. Um, the physio up the top there, um, I'd been receiving treatment from her earlier in the day and the Geelong Cats were also playing in Shepparton and so that was on the TV. One of the guys went down, he grabbed the back of the knee and she's like, oh, he, he looks like he's done his ACL. And so when she came on the court and said, where does it hurt? I was like, don't tell her it hurts in the back of the knee, don't tell her it hurts in the back of the knee. However, I told her. Um, alluding to the fact that mm, probably done my ACL. Um, I got scans early the next morning, um, text my doctor as soon as I was done. Within a minute, he called me. He looked at them and said, yes, you have done your ACL. And um, fair, to sh fair to say I was devastated. Um, it was going to be the longest period of time that I was not going to be able to play the sport that I loved since I was seven. And I was about to miss a whole season of netball. And so what I had to do um, was acknowledge the feelings that I was having because they're all valid. Um, I had to accept that position that I was currently in. And um, then as much as it sucked, I needed to do that. And then, um, you know, with God's help, look forward. And so that's exactly what I did. My rehab went really well. Um, it wasn't all smooth sailing. Um, though and easy. I remember doing one of the most simplest exercises. However, um, they took the graft from my hamstring um, to replace it in my knee and so therefore a lot of the exercises I was doing were hamstring exercises to strengthen that as well and it was such a simple exercise but I, I, I could barely do it and then I just started crying and my SSC coach was, didn't know what to do. Um, but, you know, that's just one example of, of you know, something that happened or... Um, you know, he was also, my SNC coach was going overseas for two months, so obviously I felt like he was leaving me because we were very close. We worked um, together all through my recovery and my rehab. Um, and I remember him telling me to lift this certain weight. Um, and at that moment, it was really hard. So I was really frustrated with him, but I think it was because he was leaving. And anyway, got a little bit emotional, gave me a hug and it was all good. But, you know, so many highs and lows um, that I experienced throughout my recovery. However, on a whole, it was really successful. And so um, I worked really hard um, and got myself in a really good position, was able to start um, the pre-season later that year with my team. Um, and I was <laughs> lucky enough some would say, to do one-on-one -on -one sessions with my coach who also lived in Geelong. That helped me get to that position. However, while I was doing my rehab and recovery, um, it was an opportunity for me to see what else I could do, could do while I wasn't playing netball. So I spent so much more time with family and friends. I didn't have to drive to Melbourne as much. Um, I went on holidays that you don't normally get to do. I attended church so much more regularly um, and found other ways um, to fulfill or fill my cup um, that, yeah, I certainly really appreciated. I also just happened to have um, applied online to uh, study my Bachelor of Education, literally just before I'd done my L. So maybe God's timing there, I think, but that was something else that I could focus on for that year. So that was in 2016. And I completed that um, when I finished my career at the end of 2020. So you never know uh, when you might be tested, um, but as Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, uh, which also is one of my favourite Bible verses that I go to often, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. So no matter what you are doing or where life takes you, stay true to your faith and acknowledge him. Now you may be asking, well, how do I do this? What does this look like? Or who do I turn to when I'm being challenged? Firstly and foremostly, it's God. Whether that's through prayer, conversation, music, or whatever way it is that works for you, the attention and time that you spend with him will help guide you. After this, have a conversation with someone who will listen and be supportive. This was huge for me, especially when I could, not just chatting to family and friends, but to other Christians as well. 
Um, and certainly through my ACL recovery, if it wasn't for my supports um, that I had, including the staff at the Vixens, um, it certainly would have been a different journey. Lastly, open the Bible. So much easier said than done though, hey. But turn to God's word, but turning to God's word will grow your knowledge, your understanding and can draw light on the challenge that you may be facing. And as I share this with you, I'm certainly reminding myself of this too. I encourage you not to shy away from your faith. Be bold and look for opportunities to plant the seed uh, like we are called to do. 1 Corinthians 3, 6 to 8 says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose and they will each be rewarded according to their own labour. So I ask you to finish up. What are you going to do when you're faced with a trial? Shy away from it and look for a quick way out or recognise these are a part of our journey they will help us grow and set your eyes on and run wholeheartedly towards Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that we can be Christians. Thank you that we can be on this journey and that we can be your servants. I pray that you guide us when we are challenged and tested and that we continue to turn and look to you. And I pray that we look for opportunities to share our faith with others and therefore encouraging others to also do. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Tegan. Do you want to give Tegan a round of applause? Oh. I was talking to your husband at some point in the past and uh, he was like, if netball was a video game, Tegan has like clocked it, but you'd never hear that from her, like, she's so humble, and uh, that, that's the most I've heard about your netball career. <laughs> um, uh, now it's coming into time of communion, and um, I love what you said about um, acknowledge, um, and I reckon, I'm not a Greek scholar by any stretch of imagination, but Jesus sort of says these few words that we sort of retell a lot. Um, do this in remembrance of me, do this in remembrance of me. You could you could probably substitute that with do this with it, acknowledging me. Um, so tonight, as we, uh, as we come to the table at the front of the back, um, let's acknowledge Jesus. Let's acknowledge his work and his action and how he's going about uh, continuing um, the goodness in this world. So, in your own time, let's uh, take communion.
So before I uh, sort of alluded to a funny joke about, you know, some bedtime reading for the week. But in actual fact, this is a great document of the work of God in our community. And uh, I just want to take this up. Opportunity in this part of the service to uh, thank everybody who participates in the in the work of our community, uh, whether it's uh, volunteering or uh, giving of uh, time or money or in whatever capacity it is, and um, we just thank you, thank you for your ongoing commitment uh, to our community, so that we can have a bigger impact uh, in the community of Ballarat. Thanks, Josh. Feel free to stand as we close the service out with worship.
just a worship song. And just maybe take a moment with God and just reflect on where you might be, how you're feeling, uh, what's happening in your life, in your family, maybe what's happening in your friends. Because the truth is sometimes we do go through challenges and trials and tough times, but this song is a reminder that God is always good. He's always good, so let's sing about that.
Amen. What a great song to finish service with. Hey, thanks. Thanks for coming along. We hope to see you next week. Remember Glenn uh, O'Brien, the AI guy? He'll be here talking about all things AI and, you know, what our Christian response might look like, uh, things that we could should consider. Um, he'll be here at both services and doing a workshop over lunch as well. Uh, yeah. Thanks, everyone, for joining us uh, in our online worship. It's been fantastic to have you with us. We'd love to continue to be able to connect with you and to help you in any way that we can. Uh, how could that happen? Hey, maybe you could uh, like us on Facebook. Uh, maybe you could jump on our webpage and find out some more information about us. Maybe you could send us an email or uh, give us a phone call. If there's any way we can help you, we would really love it if you would let us know. And of course, we'd love to be able to meet you uh, in person. Let me extend a personal invitation for you to come along one Sunday to our worship uh, services our, uh, here at One to One and uh, so that we can have an opportunity to meet you in person. That would be absolutely fantastic. In the meantime, may God bless you. May he fill your hearts with his love and his joy and his peace. Thanks so much. Hope to see you soon.